Picture this, you open your eyes one morning and the most dangerous fat in your entire body, the invisible fat choking your organs from the inside, is finally shrinking. Not from crazy diets, not from brutal workouts, but because you discovered the simple truth about this hidden fat and flipped the switch that makes it burn itself away. It's because you figured out the secret code to this hidden fat and used its own quirky rules against it. This isn't about willpower, it's about smart biology. Most people feel totally confused and a little angry about that deep belly fat, the kind we call visceral fat. It's like a clingy, unwelcome guest who refuses to leave. If you've ever felt frustrated, wondering why your gut seems to ignore every diet, why it stays locked in place even when you're doing everything right, I want you to know this. It is not your fault. This fat is literally wired to be stubborn. Your body built this fat with a massive number of little antennae, three to four times more than any other fat, that are designed to catch stress hormones. Think of your belly fat as a huge magnet for the feeling of being freaked out. When you're stressed, that magnet pulls all that energy right to your core and tells the fat, emergency, lock it all down. That's the wiring, the biological rules that make it so hard to budge. But here is the exciting, hope-filled twist. That exact same wiring, that stubborn rule book, is also the ultimate loophole it's the key to turning the whole system around. Once you flip a few simple switches, the right way to move, the right timing for your meals, the right simple food choices, and one humble mineral, your body suddenly transforms into a fat-burning engine, specifically hunting down that deep, hidden fat. Today, I'm going to walk you through a complete, friendly strategy built not on fads, but on real, solid science, designed to melt that visceral fat while naturally calming down your internal stress alarm. This whole plan is built for us, practical, gentle, and perfectly grounded in how our bodies work now. Ready to start flipping the switches? Let's dive into the first switch. And this one might genuinely surprise you because it has absolutely nothing to do with burning a mountain of calories. It's all about the kind of message you send to the fat. You see, your visceral fat cells are covered in tiny little launch pads called beta-3 adrenergic receptors. Imagine these like docking stations for your body's energy boost hormone, adrenaline. When adrenaline snaps into these pads, it kicks off a super-powered fat-burning party. And guess what? This party is way, way more active in that deep, hidden belly fat than it is in the soft, jiggly fat you can pinch. So, the big million-dollar question becomes, how do we give ourselves a safe, controlled, little shot of adrenaline that whispers to the body, hey, let's grab energy specifically from that deep belly reserve, the answer is something called V2 max training. Now, please don't let that complicated word make you feel intimidated. It just means how well your body can use oxygen when you're moving. Think of it simply as the horsepower of your engine. Research has shown a really clear connection. The bigger your engine, higher V2 max. The less visceral fat you have, even if your total weight stays exactly the same. Why does this happen? Because making your engine more powerful makes your body much, much better at pulling fat out of storage and burning it for fuel during those moments when adrenaline spikes. Here's the amazing part of how it works. When you push yourself into a slightly higher intensity zone for a few minutes, the adrenaline your body makes doesn't just burn fat randomly. It runs straight for those special beta-3 receptors deep in your core. The fat cells then do something amazing. They release their stored energy, fatty acids, directly into a superhighway called the portal vein, which runs straight from your gut right to your liver. Your liver then immediately snatches that energy up and uses it. It's the fastest, most convenient route, and your body is always looking for the easiest way to get things done. Now, a huge relief. We are not talking about crazy short sprints that leave you collapsed and gasping for air. That's too much stress. We're talking about slightly longer controlled bursts that gently challenge your breathing, just enough to signal your body to make a serious, deep level change. The protocol is often called the Norwegian 4x4. It sounds fancy, but it's super simple. You warm up, and then you do four rounds of four minutes where you are working at about 85 to 90% of your maximum effort. You should be able to talk, but only in short, choppy sentences. In between those four minute bursts, you take three minutes of easy, gentle movement to recover. You can do this on a stationary bike, on a rower, walking briskly uphill, or even just marching in place if that feels right for you. Do this three times a week. That's it. You're giving your body a perfect little dose of adrenaline, lighting up those receptors, and basically training your system to grab fuel from the visceral fat. And because you're not totally pushing yourself over the edge, you avoid flooding your body with stress. You're building adaptation, not exhaustion. This is especially vital as we get older because our bodies desperately need that time to recover and rebuild. Remember, 
A little bit of stress triggers growth, but too much stress just breaks us down. The Norwegian 4x4 hits that perfect restorative sweet spot. But even with adrenaline firing and those fat cells getting ready to open, there is a second major lock on your visceral fat. And this lock is totally controlled by when you eat. Let me explain. Think of insulin as the ultimate storage policeman. Its main job is to tell all your cells, especially your fat cells, to bolt the doors shut and keep all the energy stored inside. And guess what? Your deep belly fat is incredibly sensitive to this policeman. That means every single time you eat something, your insulin goes up and the fat burning process completely switches off. It doesn't matter how clean your meal is. It could be a plate of beautiful vegetables and lean chicken. If your insulin is high, those fat cell doors are locked tight. But when you fast, even just for a few hours longer than you're used to, the level of the insulin policeman drops. And that drop is the single most powerful signal to your fat cells that it's time to finally open the doors and release the stored energy. Short-term fasting also boosts a crew of workers inside your fat cells called hormone-sensitive lipase, HSL. These HSL workers are like a demolition team. Their job is to break the big chunks of stored fat triglycerides into smaller, more flexible fatty acids that can easily slip out into your bloodstream. And here is where the excitement builds. As the insulin drops after you stop eating, a friend hormone called glucagon starts to rise. Glucagon teams up with adrenaline, that same energy booster we talked about earlier. Together, they activate the HSL demolition team and the fat cell starts emptying its reserves. Because visceral fat sits right next door to your liver, those fatty acids get dumped straight into that portal vein superhighway. Quick trip, immediate use. Your body is smart, and it taps into its most conveniently located fuel first. So, what does this look like in your everyday life? It is so much simpler than you might imagine. Just aim to finish your last meal of the day around 7 or 8 in the evening. Then, simply don't eat again until 11 a.m. or noon the next day. This is called a 16 to 8 fasting window. 16 hours of not eating, 8 hours of eating. For most people, this just means gracefully skipping breakfast. And for many of us, especially as we get older, this can feel surprisingly easy once your body gets used to it because you sleep through a huge chunk of the fasting time. During this fasting window, you absolutely must stay hydrated. Water, herbal tea, black coffee, if you like it, all totally fine. You can even sip on an electrolyte drink, provided it's free of sugar and artificial sweeteners. Electrolytes, sodium, potassium, magnesium, are like fuel stabilizers. They help keep your energy steady, curb those annoying hunger pangs, and support the very fat-burning processes we're trying to fire up. A drink with around $1,000 of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium can make the fasting period much more comfortable. It's not mandatory, but it's a fantastic tool to keep in your pocket. Now with insulin lowered and those fat cell doors finally open, you'd think we'd be all set. But there's a sneaky third hormone at play, one most people never think about in relation to fat, and it's one your fat tissue itself is actively producing. Believe it or not, your body fat is not just a passive storage locker. It's actually an active hormone-making organ. And one of the most problematic hormones it produces is estrogen. Specifically, your visceral fat has a machine called an enzyme, aromatase. This enzyme has a terrible habit. It grabs androgens, like testosterone, the hormones that help you keep muscle and energy, and forcefully turns them into estrogen. And this creates a truly vicious cycle, a real source of anger. The more visceral fat you have, the more aromatase you produce. The more aromatase you produce, the higher your estrogen climbs. And higher estrogen levels essentially send a message to your body saying, store more fat right here you are literally feeding the fire. If you've ever wondered why someone who drinks a lot of beer, which is highly estrogenic, tends to develop that classic beer belly, this is the biology at work. It's a feedback loop that feels impossible to escape unless you know exactly where to jump in and stop the process. So how do we shut down that annoying machine? The answer is incredibly simple, beautifully natural, and sitting right in the produce section of your grocery store. I'm talking about cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and kale. These green powerhouses contain a compound called indole-3-carbonyl, I3C. When you eat them and your body digests that compound, it transforms it into something called diindolylmethane, D-I-M. And D-I-M performs a truly remarkable feat. It helps your liver process and get rid of excess estrogen in a much healthier, less potent form. Even more fascinating, DM encourages your body to form what we call good estrogen, 2-hydroxyestrogen, while reducing the formation of the more problematic, potent form, 
16-alpha-hydroxyestrogen, especially a problem for men. So by simply eating just one cup of steamed or lightly roasted cruciferous vegetables every other day, ideally with dinner, you are actively interrupting that aromatase cycle. You're giving your body the cleanup crew it needs to clear out the excess estrogen and kill the signal that's telling your belly to store more fat. Now, if you are a man dealing with very stubborn, frustrating belly fat, and you want to go a step further, there is an herb called Tonkata Li that acts as a gentle aromatase inhibitor. It's been studied for its ability to help balance that testosterone to estrogen ratio and even reduce cortisol, which, as we'll see in a moment, is deeply tied to visceral fat. It's not essential, but it's another powerful tool in the shed if you're looking for an extra edge. But even if you manage your insulin, even if you balance that estrogen, there is still one more devastating loop running in the background, and this one might be the single most powerful of all. Let me take you inside the fat cell for one last peek. We already talked about how visceral fat has more stress antennae, cortisol receptors, than other fat, but it gets even wilder. Visceral fat is loaded with an enzyme called 11-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase type 1. Don't worry about the name. Here is its evil job. It grabs inactive cortisone, a quiet form of cortisol floating harmlessly in your blood, and reactivates it into potent fat-storing cortisol right inside the fat cell itself. Let me make sure you heard that. Your belly fat is literally a tiny cortisol generating factory. It is creating a constant, loud, amplified stress signal that tells your abdomen to store more fat, even if you feel completely calm and unstressed on the outside. This isn't just fluffy motivation, this is documented real biology. Your visceral fat is actively working against you 24 hours a day unless you physically break the loop. So what is the simple, kind, and powerful answer to breaking this cortisol loop? The answer is magnesium. Magnesium is a non-negotiable mineral for this entire process, and honestly, for so many parts of healthy aging. It acts as a natural relaxant for your entire nervous system. It has a powerful calming effect. Specifically, it gently regulates your body's stress command center, the HPA axis, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. When your HPA axis is calm and gentle, your stress glands produce less total cortisol. And when there is less cortisol floating around, that reactivating enzyme in your belly fat has less raw material to work with. You are essentially starving the supply chain. I strongly recommend supplementing with somewhere between 300 and 500 milligrams of a highly absorbable form of magnesium every night. Magnesium glycinate, magnesium threonate, or magnesium malate are all excellent choices. Take it right before bed because it also helps you get deeper, more restorative sleep. And sleep, of course, is when your body does its most important work of repair and gentle fat burning. But don't stop there. Just add five minutes of box breathing before you close your eyes. Breathe in for four seconds, hold for four, breathe out for four, hold for four, and repeat. This simple, easy practice further calms your nervous system, lowers your baseline stress, and reinforces everything the magnesium is doing. It's not mystical. It's a powerful, free tool that works perfectly with your biology. Now, all of this, the adrenaline trigger, the insulin switch, the estrogen control, the cortisol break, it all works beautifully together. But there is one final single variable that can override everything and bring a wave of fear or failure, hunger. Because let's be real and honest with each other. If your appetite feels out of control, if you're constantly battling crazy cravings and feeling like you're using every ounce of willpower just to get through the day, none of this is sustainable. If you eat more calories than your body needs, you will store fat, and that includes visceral fat. But here is the joyful good news. Hunger is not a failure of willpower. It's actually a problem of brain chemistry. And there is a simple, easy hack that gives you back control. It's called a protein preload. 20 to 30 minutes before your largest meal of the day, consume about 25 to 30 grams of fast digesting protein. This could be a simple whey protein shake, a plate of egg whites, a bowl of Greek yogurt, or cottage cheese. It doesn't really matter what it is, as long as it's rich in protein and relatively low in fat and carbs. Here's the magical reason why this works. When you eat protein, your gut releases powerful hormones called incretins, specifically GLP-1 and peptide YY. You've likely heard of GLP-1 recently because it's the exact same hormone targeted by those popular weight loss medications, but your body makes it totally naturally in response to protein. GLP-1 gently slows down how quickly food leaves your stomach, which means food physically sits in your stomach longer, creating a prolonged, deep feeling of fullness. At the same time, peptide YY travels right up to your hypothalamus, 
the part of your brain that controls appetite and essentially gives it a satisfied, happy hug, shutting down the hunger signals. There was a study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition where people used a protein preload before a meal. The results were truly striking. The participants naturally ate fewer calories at the main meal without even feeling like they were trying, and they reported feeling fuller for between three and four hours longer than those who skipped the preload. This is not about harsh restriction. It's about gently reprogramming your satiety signals so your brain is completely satisfied with less food. So let me bring all this hope and science together for you in a neat, simple package. This is your complete, friendly, and sustainable plan. Three times a week, do that gentle V2 max training using the Norwegian 4x4 protocol. You are smartly triggering adrenaline and teaching your body to prioritize the mobilization of visceral fat. Every day, or at least most days, practice that easy 16 to 8 fasting window. Skip breakfast, finish dinner by 8 p.m., and keep that insulin policeman low so your HSL demolition team can do its fat-breaking job. Every other day, make sure to eat at least one cup of those wonderful cruciferous vegetables with dinner. You are cleverly managing aromatase and clearing out that excess estrogen signal. Every night, take 300 to 500 500 milligrams of magnesium and spend five minutes doing box breathing. You are powerfully breaking the cortisol amplification loop. Before your biggest meal, use a $30 gram protein preload to activate your natural GLP-1 and peptide YY, keeping hunger satisfied and beautifully under control. Tell me which of these simple switches, the gentle exercise, the fasting window, the vegetables, the magnesium, or the protein preload, are you going to start with today? I'd genuinely love to hear your thoughts.